This is Ross for Castanato interviewing Paul Eiding at the September 2018 Long Beach Comic Con. So now, what projects are you currently working on? Uh, right now, I'm working on something that's not voiceover related. I'm working on, I co-write a, a comic book called Blastosaurus. Blastosaurus is a six foot tall mutated uh, triceratops who lives in a town called Freak Out City where he's, he's amazed that people don't freak out when they see him. And it's basically because he's the most normal thing that lives in the city. But he hangs out with two 12-year-old kids, a little boy and a little girl, whose lives have always been, they felt boring. And now they make a friend with a, uh, a triceratops, a dinosaur, and they fight monsters, they fight robots, evil robots. And it's... Uh, it's really a very, they fight a, 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 a spaghetti and meatball monster because they're having lunch one day and one of the kids drops a meatball on the ground and then oh, drops another meatball on the ground and because they were living in an area that is a has a triangle of possibility where anything is possible the meatballs come to life well they don't know this and one little meatball swipes eyes and legs then across from him, another one spouts eyes and legs. And meet, uh, Blastosaurus stands up and without knowing it, he squishes one of the meatballs. And the other meatball looks over and sees this and vows revenge. And then decides he's going to eat everything he can and get as large as he can so he can attack and destroy Blastosaurus. So it's that kind of silly sort of thing. It's an all... Uh, all ages comic book. Cool. Well, also, voiceover wise, uh, a, a character that I created 18 years ago for Blizzard for a game called Diablo has just been added to their uh, their game Heroes of the Storm. So Mephisto is now uh, officially added to Blizzard uh, Blizzard's Heroes of the Storm. All so right. I'm doing a little bit of everything. All right. Very nice. Okay, and so. Did you have any favorite cartoons before you started voice acting? Did I what? Did you have any favorite cartoons oh. before you started voice acting? Oh, sure. I, 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 in my time, I, I love things like, you know, the Flintstones uh, and, uh, oh my gosh, Johnny Quest, which I ended up getting a chance to work on uh, when I moved out here. So that was really cool. cool. And I love the Jetsons, which I eventually got to work on as well. So, uh... And of course, I'm also a huge fan of the old Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, the Daffy Duck was my favorite character of all time. Cool. Daffy, Bugs, um, I even love Sylvester, you know. Uh, so the Warner Brothers cartoons were really popular to, to me. Cool. Why would you say that those cartoons were your favorites? Because, well, because when I started watching them, I was, I was little, and they were short. Yeah. They were like, you'd go to the movie theater, and before the, like Pixar now does it, yeah. you'd go to the movie theater, and before the movie would show, they would show a cartoon. Always have a cartoon before the movie. And that's what we, uh, which we would see. So I loved those comics, because they were crazy. They didn't have to make a lot of sense. Uh, there, there weren't a lot of deep messages in those cartoons. They were just silly. Cool. Very nice. And what was the first voice that you did? Oh my gosh. You mean you mean as a cartoon you, where I got paid for it? Or yes. the first voice ever? When I, was, I the first voice ever, I, I have no idea. I, I'm sure I started doing it when I was a little kid, you know, being silly, right. trying to make, uh, make people laugh. But um, the first cartoon I did was when I was living in Minnesota doing theater. They started a, uh, there was a power company called Northern States Power, and they decided to try and get their point across to people about saving energy and whatnot by creating a cartoon character. And he was the Northern States Power guy. And he was just this little little guy who would climb up in your attic. And he was basically Jesus, you know, a little voice like that. He was like, oh, you know, at Northern States Power, it's important to save energy. That's all, and that was him. Cool. But out in Los Angeles, I think the first, wow, it's hard to remember which one was first. The first big one was uh, Perceptor with the Transformers in 85. So, you know, that was the first one that got 
a lot of recognition. Oh, very nice. Could yeah. you please do the voice? Sure. Perceptor was the most intelligent of the Autobots. He was not one of these big guys who talked like that. Perceptor uh, was uh, a micro uh, transformed into a microscope. And plus, I'll add, the only toy that actually had a real function. <coughs> Excuse me. And Perceptor said things like, he was very verbose, he would say things like, um, a cursory evaluation of Receptacon capability indicates a distinct tactical deficiency. In other words, we're outnumbered. He always said a lot more, used a lot more words than he had to. Hey, bravo, very yeah. nice, thanks. He's also the guy who made children cry in 1986 during the movie, the original movie. And that was when he said, I fear the wounds are fatal. When Optimus died. What? When Optimus died. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's the one who said it was over. Ah. Yeah. What was it like to work on those? Oh, it was very cool, because we got to work with big name stars. You know, Orson Welles, was his, last, his last movie. Yeah. Robert Stack and, and um, um, guys who had not done much, much voiceover before. But, you know, you're part of the Transformers world. Very nice. Well, thank you for allowing me to interview you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Well, there you have it. That was Rosso Castanato interviewing Paul Iding at the September 2018 Long Beach Comic Con.